All right, good day everybody. This is Jason Pagan, your unexpert in anything, but I'm here with a desire to understand, heal, connect, build, and transform your life, mind, and relationships through understanding and tools for everyday life. Today, I'm going to talk about attachment, okay? Everyone has an attachment style. It's uh, Attachment is literally how you attach and continue to function inside of your relationships, be it friendships or romantic relationships or otherwise. So attachment theory does a really good job at explaining how and why people behave the way that they do inside of relationships. It really brings a lot of understanding. Now, there's an ideal way to do that. There's obviously an ideal way to function in relationships. We know that our greatest relationship is with our Heavenly Father, and Scripture outlines uh, all of those things that pertain to and are connected to that perfection of relationship. But we're not all there, obviously. But we are Christians. That begins with the word Christ. And we are followers of Christ. And we are all involved in a journey, a journey of growth uh, toward that end. Okay, so the basics of attachment style, and if you took the quiz that I posted on this page uh, or I shared with you, you realize this, the basics of attachment style are that most people generally fit into four boxes pretty well. The first is secure attachment style. The second, anxious, preoccupied attachment style. A fearful, avoidant attachment style or a dismissive, avoidant attachment style. And boys, there's a lot of information to glean when you begin to understand all the um, dynamics of these attachment styles. So whatever attachment style that you tested as, that is literally your baseline. And I think it's important for you to understand that. It's a baseline of understanding. It is not who you are. It is where you are, okay? Uh, who you are is completely different, all right? And you definitely need to attach to who you are because that has to do with your identity. You are in Christ. Attachment style has to do with your actions and your functions, your belief, your, your emotions, and your behaviors inside relationships. But who you are is not about your performance. Who you are is based on what he has done to you. You are in Christ. You are a new creation. You are a child of God. You are completed in Christ, and you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So thank God for what he has done to you, okay? You are complete in him, and that's awesome. But now, your thoughts, your actions, your emotions... Mm, those are a different story. You will spend the rest of your life on this earth catching up uh, your emotions, your actions, and your thoughts with your identity in Christ. Now, that's a journey, and it's a journey that we all take. So don't be discouraged by it. Enjoy it. Step into it, and it does not affect your identity. Now, where does attachment style play into this journey? Well, Attachment styles are literally something that are programmed, or I'll use another word, something that are learned. You learn it. You are not born with it. You learn attachment style. And uh, let me explain how that works. Repetition plus emotion equals the firing and wiring of the way your brain believes and functions. So anytime you have repeated something over and over again, and it comes with the same emotions over and over again, you learn to function a certain way. How your brain wires and fires is based on repetition plus emotion. And so when you go through the same situations over and over again, you are programmed then to function a certain way. You adapt in order to maintain relationships. For example, if you had a caregiver and uh, or your parent, and every time you came to them with, uh, an emotion every time you cried or every time you were upset. They dismissed your emotions or they pushed you to the side mm -hmm. over and over and over again that caused you to feel a certain way. Repetition plus emotion. Eventually you learned that expressing your emotions doesn't serve well in this relationship with this caregiver. And of course, you're a very small child. You have no idea that that's appropriate or inappropriate. You simply know that it is. So in order to adapt to that relationship, you learn to repress your emotions, okay? Repress them because 
They are not needed. They're ridiculous. They're not necessary, and they need to be dismissed. Well, over time, you're going to grow up and enter into relationships, and suppressing your emotions can be part of now your new relationship. So the fact is we are all born with a clean slate, handed over to people and environments that are going to write our programming. The challenge is you're born with a, a clean slate and I am or a blank slate and we don't have any chalk in our hands. So someone else begins to write our story. And as we are handed over to caregivers and we enter into that first primary so important of a relationship where everything in life is going to be imprinted on us and we're going to learn how to function and we have nothing else to compare it to. We simply learn this is the way life is. Okay. We're not old enough to decipher it. We're not old enough to understand that it's not our fault. We're not old enough to look into our value and look beyond and, or, and organize thoughts and analyze things. We simply accept things the way they are and adapt in order to navigate the environment and the relationships that are in front of us. So those relationships with your first caregivers teach you what's acceptable and what's unacceptable, uh, what communication looks like, what is pleasing and unpleasing, how to handle and navigate your emotions, what needs are legitimate or are not legitimate, and how worthy am I to be heard? How worthy am I to be seen? So as a child, you learn or you are programmed with a couple of core things here I want to talk about. Number one, your belief patterns. I am wanted. I am needed. I am loved. I am accepted. I am approved. Or I am a failure. I'm not necessary. Uh, I'm not worth hearing. All of those belief patterns and core wounds then come into your life because of your upbringing. Your emotional patterns, okay? I'm sad. I'm lonely. Uh, I'm depressed. I... I um, um, I am discouraged. Those emotional patterns exist because of this, all right? Then you have, obviously, you're learning uh, boundaries. You're learning communication patterns, how to communicate, whether to communicate, how to operate in body language, all of your coping me mechanisms. How do I handle the stresses? What do I do to deal with the pains that are in my heart and in my life? Um, and so... Those are different for each and every attachment style, depending on the way that you were raised. So after childhood, here's the challenge. Little things or little people grow up to be big people and they walk into life with a subconscious set of rules about what we can expect in life, about communication and fears and beliefs and expectations of ourselves and others and characteristics that all of this develops, and here's the crazy thing, all of this develops between the ages of zero and two. And obviously, because those patterns generally stay in place, they continue throughout life just to be reaffirmed and reconfirmed and become more solid and more anchored over time. So obviously, that's not your fault. And because of your new life in Christ, you can experience major transformation and change. Neuroplasticity, which is the ability of the brain to be refired and rewired, again, through repetition plus emotion, your neuropathways in your brain can literally be retransformed or transformed and renewed and remade again. And if there's something you want to change or see changed or transformed, and you can see it in scripture, that in your mind, emotions, and thinking that that needs to be addressed, it can be addressed. You can have transformation and you can have renewal. The Lord becomes the source and the foundation of and personal transformation. And then that transformation in your own self, you then begin to bring that into your relationships. That's called Christ formed in us, all right? The goal is Christ in us. So, when you look at that, when you look at Christ in us, this is ideal. This is what it should look like. And that's really what we're all working toward or what I like to call earning attachment, transform transformation toward securely secure attachment. And that is having your identity, your security, and your purpose worked out in Jesus Christ. Now, some people, uh, they are they're raised as a child in an environment and 
and they are raised with a secure attachment. In other words, they do well in long-term relationships that are lasting, that grow up in a household where there's healthy communication, uh, when a child expresses a need or an emotion, they are approached with curiosity. They're not dismissed or ridiculed. They grow up thinking, I can rely on other people and they can rely on me. Okay, when you look at this, this is everything that Christ does in us. It brings us a secure attachment in our relationships. You know, they also grow up believing my needs are worth being met and they're worth being heard. And it's okay to have needs and it's okay to take up space it's also important for me to hear other people's needs and to meet those needs. Like in scripture, you find 58 one another's in the scripture. They are very cool with the one another's. They're like, yes, you help one another, minister to one another, weep with them that weep, rejoice with them that rejoice. They can navigate emotions. They understand. They don't dismiss the needs and emotions of others. And they don't think that they're the only ones that have needs and emotions. You understand that your emotions are in fact valid and important and they're worthy to be heard. Uh, you grow up believing that your needs are worth being met. You, you know that I matter and you need to matter because you have something to offer to others that is of value. You're, parter, you're, you're part of something that's greater than yourself. You need to take up space in order to minister to others. You, 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 you shouldn't live a minimized life that you can communicate and negotiate like a family and that it's okay to have boundaries and that boundaries are not to keep other people out, but boundaries are set in place with I statements that I do this or I do that because you're protecting your own self to be healthy. You're, 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 you're maintaining a healthy view of yourself. So boundaries are expected from other people as well. All of this leads to functional relationships. Now, every one of us is working towards secure attachment. And it all starts with the security of knowing who you are in Christ and what Christ has done to you. And having your identity in him needs, it needs, needs to be anchored because this maximizes your ability to be and to do all that he has called you to do in your relationships in the kingdom of God. So our main focus uh, is going to be marital relationships, but it's not limited to marital relationships. And even beyond that, we're zeroing in on you as an individual so you can look at where you are as your baseline and move toward that secure attachment, which will maximize everything in your walk with God and for the kingdom that he desires in you and for you. So next, we're going to begin to discover the basis of anxious attachment style, and what that looks like. Thank you for joining me today. God bless you.